case you hadn't worked out, from the White Horse and the motto of Invicta, this is a story from my home county of Kent. Now, Kent is a very conservative place. It's conservative politically, it's conservative socially, it's conservative educationally, which is the main reason that I decided to live and work in London. But perhaps that conservatism, that very conservative nature of the people of the county of Kent is a reaction to their past. Because in the past, Kent wasn't a conservative place. Kent was loosh. The people of Kent had really rather loose connection with the idea of morality. And one of the loosiest places of the loosiest county in England was down here on the coast, just near the border with Sussex, the parish of Brookland, which was a lesson in luciosity. The poor bells of the parish church, St Augustine's of Brookland, and there you have St Augustine's of Brookland, quite an unusual tower for a church in Kent, but that was the bell tower. The poor bells felt quite neglected. Yes, they rang for services, they tolled for funerals, and there were practice nights, but they never got to ring for a wedding. Because the people of Brookland, the people of the parish of St Augustine, lived out of wedlock. And nothing that the poor vicar could do would persuade them to get married and become respectable. In fact, the poor old vicar had a breakdown and it ended up being retired to an almshouse in Royal Tunbridge Wells, which really didn't do him much good at all because Tunbridge Wells was just as loose as Brooklyn. A new parson arrived full of vim and vigour, full of enthusiasm and full of prayer. And he spent most days in his church, on his knees, praying for the people of Brooklyn that they would see the error of their ways. And yet his prayers seemed to have no effect until one day he was on his knees in the sanctuary of the church when he heard a <clears throat> He looked round and there was a young couple. And they were both looking at the floor and they were both rubbing their hands together and they were both bright red. And the parson stood up and sighed and said, all right, when is it due? And the girl looked up at the parson and blushed and said, Oh, no, sir. No, indeed, sir. And the young man looked at the parson and said, No, 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 sir, you don't understand. We, 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 we want to get wed. The parson couldn't quite believe his ears and he said, I, I beg your pardon. And the young woman said, Sir, we wish to get married. And the parson, his heart filled with joy and he beamed at them as he brushed some dust off his wig. Now, of course, preparations had to be made for the wedding. The bell ringers had to practice because they hadn't rung for a wedding for very many years. And the bands had to be called. And so the parson called the bands. Does anyone here know any just cause of impediment why these two persons should not be joined in holy matrimony? If they know, then they are to declare it. And as he finished, and there was silence, some dust fell from the roof, and people brushed it off their clothes. The next Sunday, the parson called the bands again. Does anyone here know any just cause or impediment why these two persons should not be joined in holy matrimony? If they know, do know, then they are to declare it. And again, there was silence, apart from a little fragments of plaster dropping from the roof onto people's Sunday clothes that they brushed off. And the third Sunday, does anyone here know any just cause of impediment why these two persons should not be joined in holy matrimony? If so, they are to declare it. And the only sound was a small fragment of the ceiling dropping to the ground. It was the Saturday of the wedding. Now, I don't know how much you know about bell ringing, but in weddings in churches like St Augustine's Brooklyn, the, if the bell ringers are in the tower and they are upstairs so they can't look along the church. There's a little spy hole so that you can look through and they can see when the wedding is about to start. So probably probably the smallest person in the bell team will hide them, screw themselves up to look through the spy hole and then when the bride reaches the groom's side they give a warning and the bells stop as if by magic. So 
the bells were ringing. The groom was waiting in the church with his family and the bride's family and the rest of the village. And they had the glorious sound. Ding, 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 ding. And the bride walked in and the organ struck up and she walked to the front of the church and she stood next to the groom and up in the tower looking through the spy hole. The smallest member of the team shouted, she's here. And the captain of the bell team said, stand which means stop the bells. And so all the bell ringers, one after the other, pulled on their ropes and stopped them. When I say them, I mean the ropes, because despite the fact the ropes had stopped, the bells kept ringing. Ding, 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 ding. The parson, thought the bell ringers were just using the opportunity because they didn't get to ring at weddings very often to really have a good go at ringing for the wedding and were just going to ring through the service so he just decided to raise his voice and just go with what was happening and so they continued with the service with the bells ringing over the top of them ding 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 and the parson took his scarf and wrapped his scarf around the hand of the bride hands of the bride and groom and he said what God has joined, let no man put asunder. I declare you husband and wife. And the moment those words passed his lips, I declare you husband and wife, the bells no longer rang in a peal of ding, 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 ding. But in the shock that a man and woman would get married in the parish, they started to crash. Bang, bang. Clang, clang. The people of the church looked alarmed. They looked up as pieces of the roof started dropping on them. Nothing majorly structural, but fragments of plaster, little bits of wood, birds' nests started dropping out of the, uh, uh, out of the rafters. And then, in the shock that a man and woman would be married in St Augustine's Church, Brooklyn, the bells rang so hard that the tower itself lifted itself up off the church building and landed next to the church. Which, if you visit the parish of Brooklyn now, is the position you will find it in. The only church in Kent with its bell tower next to the main building. And that is the story of the Tower of Brooklyn. And that was how I have told it to you.